here at Audio Animals, we work predominantly as an online mixing and mastering studio. This is our Dolby Atmos studio. Next door, we have our mastering studio. Everything that's Atmos related and mixing related, we do in here. Our client base is worldwide where we're online. Uh, so we'll work with every, every genre. We can see the massive benefits of Atmos. The fact that Apple announced it as their chosen format, at that point, we're like, right, we have to get on to this because if we don't now, we will left behind or we will have to do this in the future. And we had already had a lot of people say to us, can you deliver in Atmos? And we were like, well, not, no. And it was only the amount of people that did ask us and what we didn't want to happen was that our client base would start asking us on a regular basis can you do atmos and have to go somewhere else we wanted to be able to supply our clients with everything that they needed and that was atmos stereo everything i would say my first proper experience with trinov was when we brought it into this room I knew it was going to be good. I knew it was going to sound good because I've heard good rooms and I've heard what Trinov can do. But to know this room and how this room sounded before putting the Trinov in, I was happy. I was There was a few things that weren't quite right. And then it was once we put it in, we turned it on and it was just like a, an, it was like an epiphany. It was like a realization of what I thought was good to what was actually good. And the jump was massive. It was a huge jump. It's a mind blowing piece of equipment. And the one thing I always say about it is it's the reassurance that when you are putting this piece of equipment in, you're reassured that it is right. And nothing else does that. So Dale came in and did all the calibration for me. He said to me, it takes a little bit longer because obviously you're going around 15 speakers rather than two. And I think the calibration was pretty much done within five to seven minutes for the 15 speakers. It was done. <laughs> That's how simple it was. So I would imagine on a stereo setup, you're talking maybe 30, 40 seconds to have a fully calibrated room. And what was great about the Trinov was the software that it ships with. You could turn off each element of it. So you could turn off the phase, the uh, gain alignment uh, you could turn off the eq you could turn all these things off so you could individually audition exactly what each part was doing so when dolby came down to certify the room we previously said we are getting a trid off do you want to wait until that's in before coming down they said yes of course we put the trin off in they walked into the room, first of all, took measurements, and it was literally a case of, this is right. It, there wasn't anything really for them to do. They could have spent four hours here going EQ there, EQ there, EQ there. The difference is they just walked in and was like, it's done, all our work's done for us. Again, that is the reassurance, especially from, from someone like Dolby to come in and say that, it's a massive reassurance. And that's what Trinov does. Ninety-five percent of the time, I stand and mix. I only sit down if I'm just generally listening. So what I've done with the Trinov is I've set presets of a standing position where I've set the mic here, took a measurement there, and then took a measurement in the sitting position. My default is standing, but if I need to sit down, it's not like I'm changing position and getting a, a different sound. I can literally change the preset and sit down and work, which is great. Plus I've got presets with the Dolby Curve on, without the Dolby Curve. Uh, so you know, if, if I'm working on something for cinema, I can put the Dolby Curve on more. And then I've got, uh, when Dolby came in to commission the room, I've got that version as presets. So I've got multiple amounts of presets. Honestly, it is the best piece of gear. I mean, we have got an um, unfair child compressor, alpha compressor, a Masalek MEA2, like all the best pieces of, of gear. But 
all of these pieces of equipment are only as good as what you're hearing. So if you don't have the Trinov in, these pieces of equipment, they could be the best pieces of equipment in the world. But if you're not hearing them right, they're no good. So put a, a Trinov in and you're hearing what you are meant to be hearing. That's highly important. And no matter what it costs, in the grand scheme of building an Atmos room and the amount of money that you're, you're spending on an Atmos room, it's a blip in the ocean for something that is the reassurance of, of that accuracy. And even in a two channel stereo production studio, it's the difference of you hearing something right or wrong. How much is that worth? That's worth whatever it costs. It doesn't matter what it costs. It's essential. Would I build an Atmos room without Trinov? Uh, no, because you you shouldn't. I put a Trinov in after, I think it was maybe one or two weeks of mixing, and I was happy at this point with the way my room was sounding. Then I put the Trinov in, and I was just like, this is essential. No Atmos studio should be built without a Trinov. I would even go as far as to say Dolby should not be certifying anyone without a Trinov. I've shown a few people A to B, Trinov on, Trinov off, and everybody is just like, whoa because it sounds good before it sounds all right so there's nothing wrong with how it's sounding but you just know it's not 100 percent then you turn it on and then because you've got a reference point of what's good and bad you then hear right okay i get it that's what it's doing i tell you what it's like i tell you very much what it's like you know when you put like a, a g bus compressor on a mix and it just glues the mix together the whole room just glues together and becomes a cohesive surrounding all the way around you and you do not get that without the Trinov and that's why I would say it's an essential piece of kit for every Dolby Atmos studio.